Hello, this is Step School. On this video, I will show how to use digital signal processing functions of SMC's library. First, we will learn how to include this library to your project. Then, we will implement FIR filter using this library. Before we implemented low pass FIR filter from scratch, but when we use this function, it works really, really fast, and the implementation of this function is quite easy. To implement our filter, first and foremost, we have to install CMC's DSP library to our project. We can download all the necessary files from the GitHub repository and include them manually to our project. But if we're using stm 32 cubeid there's a much easier solution. We need to open stm 32 cubemix IOC file. Then we press software parks, select components, and then we need to show the filter panel by pressing this button. And here we choose DSP library. Then we have to tick this box. Then we press OK. Then um, from these categories, there will be software packs. And we just press, we have right now just a one. We again tick CMDSP library. Then we save the project then it will automatically include all the necessary um, files to our project. After the code generation is complete, we will have a new folder called middlewares and within this folder we have the necessary header file, arm mass header file. There's a one more thing we need to do before start coding. We press the right button of the mouse on the project name, then we open properties of the project, then we go to C, C++, general, path, and symbols, and we choose symbols category, and we we are using for C language. And here we need to add a new symbol, armas uh, at CM4. Since I'm using sm 32 l 4 microcontroller, I need to add this name. If you're using, for instance, SM32 F7, you need to add CM7. If you're using, for instance, SM32 F3, you have to add RMS CM3. This is because of the architecture of the microcontrollers. If you want to know more about the architecture of the microcontrollers, how it works, and many other things, you can refer to my SM32 introductory course on my website and finally we press ok apply and close finally we can include the header file we open main.c and we can include rmas.h and if you do everything correct when building the project, you have to have zero errors. If you get some errors, please check the steps that I proceeded. Next, we can implement the filter and it is straightforward, but I want to explain all the parameters of the filter in detail so you can easily customize it to your need. First, of course, we need to define all the necessary variables. We need to have this variable with this data type to specify all the parameters of the filter. Then we have input to the filter and output to the filter. And these variables uh, might be buffers. The filter is designed in a way that you can apply it to a set of samples. Imagine that you have 100 samples and you want to apply that filter to all 100 samples. In that case, you can define an array with 100 elements. And as an output, you get 100 samples. But in my case, I want to apply the filter to 
just one sample in every iteration. So we apply, so we have one sample, and as an output, we get one sample. And this is this parameter is called block size. In our case, block size is equal to one. Next, we have this buffer. And let me explain um, the, the reason of having this buffer. When we apply the filter, we basically have to implement this equation. And as you see, we need to have all samples to implement the, this filter. So in order to not to waste time um, by specifying the old values every time, we have that state buffer that tracks old values automatically. So every time when we apply the filter, it will update the old values. So we don't need to bother about it. Before, when we implement uh, the filter from scratch, we have to specify the old values using circular buffer. But here, we don't need to do that. We have this buffer, and it will be automatically updated every time when we apply the filter. And regarding the size of this buffer, and the size of this buffer, uh, which we call FIR state, the size of this buffer is equal to the block size plus um, the number of coefficients of the filter minus one. And since in our case, um, block size is equal to one, so minus, minus one minus one, Zero, and the the length of this array, the length of this array is equal to the number of coefficients. When implementing the FIR filter, I'm using these coefficients. You can refer to my old video where I showed how to design the filter, um, and in this video you can understand how I came up with these coefficients. And finally, pay attention to the data type of these variables. From the programming point of view, there's not much difference between this data type and a float, but when we use this, microcontroller works much faster. Next, we have to initialize the FIR filter. For that purpose, we will use this function, and it has these arguments. First is a FIR instance that we defined it before. And also, we need to specify the, co the coefficients of the filter. So I have these coefficients, and we have this number of coefficients. Then we have this um, state buffer that holds old values, which is updated automatically. And finally, we need to specify the block size. In, in our case, we have just a one sample in every iteration, so block size is equal to one. Then within the timer uh, callback function, I'm going to implement apply the filter. You can refer to my old videos um, to understand how I'm using timer update callback function about ADC, the, the rest of the code. So basically in every one millisecond, I sample um, accelerometer data using ADC then I apply um, a fire filter using these two lines. So we have input value, but this is integer, so I need to use typecasting to have the proper data type. Then I um, fit this data to the filter, and I have the output of the filter. And also we need to specify the instance of the filter that holds all the parameters of the filter, and we have the block size equal to one. Finally, let's check the FIR filter. We debug our code. Then I will use a timeline graph to plot the output of the FIR filter. So we have this variable, which is the output of the FIR filter and the actual one data, the input data. You can refer to my previous video, how to set up the timeline graph tool. So if we run the code, 
and as you see we have the output of the filter which has much less noise compared to the input data because we implemented low-pass filter using this function 